morning and welcome to our worship here at Bog Hall Parish Church on this the third Sunday of Advent. So a few intimations before we continue in our worship. Today that um, Brenda, our long-serving cleaner of 31 years, has retired and we managed to catch Brenda and Mark and to present her with a gift and a picture from the church and we send Brenda and Mark all our best wishes and our blessings as they start a new life of retirement. So we say thank you to Brenda for those years of service that she's given to the church. A few other intimations for you this afternoon uh, will be our wreath of remembrance that will be at the church from between 2 and 3 p.m. You're invited to come along with a sprig of evergreen to help create a wreath of remembrance. And hopefully we can stagger the numbers out between 2 and 3. So come at any time between those, those hours. That wreath will then go on to St. Columbus Church and the High Church. And it will be at the Court Funeral Parlour next Sunday. Um, their annual service of remembrance will take place there on the 20th at 2 p.m. But this year it will be on Zoom. Um, so if you're looking for details, I can get those details to you. And next Sunday evening, we are invited to join St. Columbus and St. Peter's for uh, nine lessons in carol service at 6.30. And again, that is on Zoom. I have to announced the death of a long-standing member, one of those founding members of the church. Nancy Laird passed away last week and Nancy's funeral will take place here at the church on Thursday, this coming Thursday at 12 noon. And we'll remember Nancy's family and her friends in our thoughts and prayers at this difficult time. Worship today is going to be led, and uh, please say by, by Andrew. So let's call ourselves to worship for the ringing of the church. Good morning, all. The light of God's love shines in the dark places of our world healing its brokenness and bringing hope to places of despair. The light of God's love makes us a forgiven people. The light of Christ shines brightly in the darkened places of our lives, bringing healing and hope. The light of Christ shines brightly in the faces of our neighbours. Look for that light as we share Christ's peace. Our first hymn is hymn 543, Longing for Light, We Wait in the Darkness.
come to God in prayer. Holy One, you have come among us to lead us in the paths of righteousness. Guide our feet through the wilderness towards the living water of your grace, following in the steps of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Creator God, who in the beginning commanded the light to shine out of darkness, we pray that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ may dispel the darkness of ignorance and unbelief, shine into the hearts of all your people, and reveal the knowledge of your glory. Lord, we confess that we have sinned against you in the things that we have thought, said and done. We are really sorry and turn away from these sins. Please forgive us and set us free to walk in the light. In the light of your presence, Jesus, show us the sins we need to confess to you and turn away from. Let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Now we have our Old Testament reading. The reading is Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 4, and then 8 to 11. The Sovereign Lord has filled me with his Spirit. He has chosen me and sent me to bring good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to announce release to captives and freedom to those in prison. He has sent me to proclaim that the time has come when the Lord will save his people and defeat their enemies. He has sent me to comfort all who mourn, to give to those who mourn in Zion joy and gladness instead of grief, a song of praise instead of sorrow. They will be like trees that the Lord himself has planted. They will all do what is right, and God will be praised for what he has done. They will rebuild cities that have long been in ruin. Verse 8. The Lord says, I love justice and I hate oppression and crime. I will faithfully reward my people and make an eternal covenant with them. They will be famous among the nations. Everyone who sees them will know that they are a people whom I have blessed. Jerusalem rejoices because of what the Lord has done. She is like a bride dressed for her wedding. God has clothed her with salvation and victory. As surely as seeds sprout and grow, the Sovereign Lord will save his people and all the nations will praise him. So you may well have noticed we've not lit the Advent wreath yet. We're going to do that now. So as it's the third Sunday of Advent, we're going to light three candles this morning. We light this first candle as a sign of our hope. Hope that you can meet us even in the mess of our world. Hope that you still see us, though we feel we are lost in the rubble. Let this light be the guide that brings us to Emmanuel once more. We light the second candle 
with peace in our hearts for the promise of proximity, the nearness of God. Even when we forget to listen, to lean into that presence, God is as close as our own breath. This in a confused and confusing world is a peace that passes all understanding. It is the peace that knows that company is coming. We light the third candle with love in our hearts. Light makes a circle to shine in the darkness. We wait for the fullness of God to be revealed in the birth of Jesus. We light the candles of the Advent wreath as a sign that God's love and light will break through the darkness of our world. If we follow and live in the light of God, we will be sustained through the darkest night and the deepest sorrow and pain. We now have our Gospel reading. This is John chapter 1, verses 6 to 8 and then 19 to 28. God sent his messenger, a man named John, who came to tell people about the light so that all should hear the message and believe. He himself was not the light. He came to tell about the light. In verse 19. The Jewish authorities in Jerusalem sent some priests and Levites to John to ask him, Who are you? John did not refuse to answer, but spoke out openly and clearly, saying, I am not the Messiah. Who are you then? they asked. Are you Elijah? No, I am not, John answered. Are you the prophet? they asked. No, he replied. Then tell us who you are, they said. We have to take an answer back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John answered by quoting the prophet Isaiah. I am the voice of someone shouting in the desert. Make a straight path for the Lord to travel. The messengers who had been sent by the Pharisees then asked John, If you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet, why do you baptise? John answered, I baptise with water. But among you stands the one you do not know. He is coming after me, but I am not good enough to even to untie his sandals. All this happened in Bethany on the east side of the Jordan River, where John was baptising. Light has always been an important part of life. It has also been an important part of the Christian faith. Throughout the Bible there are over 270 references to light, but it has not always been our friend. For instance, during World War II, people tried all they could to block the light out. Now in 2020, because of the pandemic, we are again living through a dark period. In our reading from John's Gospel, we are introduced to John the Baptist, who is referred to as John. Verse 7 says he comes as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. This shows how important the light was. That it needed someone to go before it to get the path ready and make sure that all might believe. Light is vulnerable. Light can be blocked out and light can be destroyed. Our faith is like a light. It can be vulnerable, it can be blocked out and it can be destroyed if we do not nurture it. Before the Gospel passage we read today, we have the introduction to John's Gospel. And in verses 4 and 5, it is written, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Sometimes the darkness can feel overwhelming. 
But no matter what dark place we are in, the darkness cannot overcome our faith if we truly accept the Lord into our lives. During this time of Advent, it is the perfect time to nurture the light that is our faith. In a few weeks, we will celebrate the birth of Christ and the hope that this will bring to us. However, if we let the commercial side of Christmas take over, then the light is blocked out, and so our faith and its development is blocked out. At any time of the year, we need to find the pinpricks of light in our lives and nurture these so that they can become full flames. I was watching a Christmas television channel recently, one of those ones that start on Freeview in about October. In one film they were discussing the winter solstice, which takes place on the 21st of December and is the shortest day of the year, the day with the least amount of light. In the film, they didn't look upon the darkness as negative, but they saw it as time for preparation for the new day and the new light that will come in the spring and the hope that will bring. This is what we need to focus on for our own lives. We are always going to have times of darkness and for some it may feel like the darkness will never end. But by finding the pinpricks of light those moments have seen God in our lives, even when it is difficult. We can use the darkness as a time of preparation, to look forward to a time of light and therefore hope. This idea of the light and darkness always reminds me of the footprint poem. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand where, why, when I needed you the most, you would leave me. He whispered, My precious child, I love you and will never leave you. Never ever during your trials and testings. When you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. This shows someone in the darkness, even though they are not looking for the pinpricks of light in their life, that God is with them. Have faith, friends, that God will indeed carry you no matter what darkness you are in. Remember, through faith, we can find the light. So who was John the Baptist? We all know the story of how Elizabeth received a visit from an angel and was blessed with a child. John was born six months before Jesus. John was sent by God to make a way for Jesus. He was sent to prepare the way. We have the reading in John's Gospel during Advent because Advent means coming. As Christians we are waiting the arrival of the coming of Jesus. In the Christian calendar for me, personally the two most important events are Christmas and Easter. They have to go together. Without Christmas, Good Friday cannot happen, as Jesus would not exist in an earthly form. Therefore, God's mission for him could not be fulfilled, and our sins could not be forgiven. And this is what sits at the heart of the Christian faith. And this is John's message too. When he is questioned about who he is, he makes sure it is clear, and verse 20 says, he did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. This is not like during Holy Week where Peter denies Jesus, but this is a message asking people not to get confused. There is someone else coming and to get ready. Are we ready for Jesus to arrive? We always make sure we prepare ourselves for Christmas Day, making sure we have the turkey, unless you're vegetarian, the presents and the drink? Do we put as much effort into our own preparations for the arrival of Jesus? Are we ready to accept Jesus into our lives? Yes, we need to prepare for Christmas Day in terms of gifts and food, 
but we must also take the time to prepare our spiritual lives. Have time for prayer, to remove any obstacles that will prevent us from accepting Jesus fully as our Lord and Saviour. Christmas should not just be associated with overindulging. If we want to overindulge, do so with the love of Jesus. Because believe me, friends, that would be more rewarding than having that last picking blanket or mince pie. With an abundance of Jesus' love, we have hope. We don't need to hide. We don't have to fear what will come as God will be with us all the way through our lives. And this will give us the strength to deal with life. Be like John. Make ready the way for Christ. Prepare yourselves for his coming and share that gift with others. Remember, through faith we can find the light. John was sent by God. We know this from verse 6 of today's Gospel reading. Here was a man sent from God whose name was John. In my opinion, John knew what his purpose was in life. He was sent to prepare a way for the Messiah. He was there fulfilling God's mission. He was not a passenger in that mission. He fully embraced what God wanted him to do. He shared the gift that God had given him. He did not try to pass himself off as more than he was. He was a servant of God. And that is what we are all called to be. Each of us have different callings. Some like me are exploring the call to ministry, some are called to be elders, some to be Sunday school teachers. But all of us are called to show the mission of God to others. How many of us have accepted our mission from God? How many of us have shared the gift God has given us? During this time of Advent, we need to prepare the way for Christ's coming. And this is our mission. And we must share the gift that Jesus will bring us. Let people know the hope and joy that Jesus can bring to their life. As Advent is a time for preparation, let us not be a passenger in God's mission. Let's share the gift of Jesus this Advent season. Share the gift that faith can bring. Share the calling we have and fulfil God's mission here on earth. Let us find the pinpricks of light in the darkness that this year has brought us. Let us find the hope and the light that God's mission and the birth of Christ will bring. Let us prepare the way for the Messiah's coming and the hope that he will bring us. Take the time to prepare our spiritual lives, not just our earthly lives this Christmas. Nurture ourselves when our light becomes vulnerable. Do not allow it to be blocked out and never let it be destroyed. Keep your faith strong so that when times are hard, God will carry us through these times. We will see only the one set of footprints. This does not mean we are alone, but being carried. Find God in everyday situation, and these are the pinpricks of light. Do not be a passenger in God's mission. Share the gift that Jesus' birth will bring to our lives. Remember, through faith we can find the light. So as part of our prayers of intercession, we're going to actually use a video this morning. As you watch the video, look at the moments of darkness and how the light is brought into these moments. Try to find the pinpricks of light.
Let us come together in prayer. Creator God, we thank you for your Son, the light of the world. We thank you too for those in every generation who have faithfully pointed to him and who have spread his light, even in the darkest times. We offer you our prayers for those who struggle with this season. We think of the bereaved, of those who cannot afford to celebrate as they might want, of those with no one to share a table, and of those for whom childlessness is accentuated at this time. Lord God, you understand and share tears and silences, disappointments and regrets. Bring your comfort, fill with your strength and grant all your peace. We pray too for places in the world where conflict and violence are rife, for places where nature has been harsh and we have been thoughtless in caring for your creation. Give us greater concern for one another and an even greater willingness to do whatever we can for each other and for the world itself. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is hymn 279, Make Way for Christ the King. And a blessing. Comfort, joy, and peace be yours. Know how blessed you are and go out to share that blessing to all around you. May the Father's hand keep you from stumbling. The footprints of Jesus give you confidence to follow and the fire of the Spirit keep you warm and safe in your walk with God from this day forward. Amen.